so hurt the jihadists of Islamic State that they lashed out by massacring civilians in Baghdad. Now seeing huge another pools of smoke another rising into the night the sky. Four or five huge billows of smoke. New families are still arriving. UNICEF says one in five Iraqi children, 3.6 million, are at serious risk because of the war. I have probably special ties with Iraq given that I am born to an Iraqi mother. Um, have vis visited much. Um, my knowledge about Iraq was fairly limited, but I've always felt that that was one regular night. I was just home uh, preparing for my next day in medical school. For some reason, I was a little bit uh, restless not uh, being able to go to sleep, and I turned on the TV. And all of a sudden, I saw all these channels just covering the events in Iraq. And at that time, um, the invasion that was happening and all the bombing. And um, I remember feeling so overwhelmed hearing, hearing the background um, screaming and just people. Um, you, can, you were able to tell that there are families uh, over there. And I just felt that they're human beings and they can be just like any of us and that was probably the night that I felt that there's something that needs to be done something that has to happen over there to help these people there was definitely a little bit of fear not really from my side it was mostly from maybe my family's side and especially my mother actually uh, given that she had left Iraq relatively at a, at a young age um, and you know all what we know about Iraq is what we hear in the news um, there was a little bit of fear from her side. She wasn't sure if it was safe for me to go or not. Um, and of course, given that I was newly married at that time, my wife also was a little bit concerned. Initially, to be honest, yes, I was you know, very much like, oh no. But, um, but then when he told me about the mission, um, I was very proud of him um, and you know, that he has this courage to go there. We were very overwhelmed by the amount of appreciation that they showed us. Um, they were very happy and, and, and appreciative that we had uh, made the trip and went there. And um, we had, you know, we had developed a good plan for their education. Dr. Humanagvi had traveled before there just to see patients. And um, she was obviously limited in time over there to see um, all the number of patients that she was uh, seeing. So. Um, she and I and I developed this idea where we can uh, go over there and train the physicians, train the therapists over there with all the new medicine and rehabilitation medicine for them to be able to provide to their own people. And I think that was um, a good idea so we can have more of a mass service rather than a few times a year. When we decided to arrange a disability clinic, uh, we coordinate with the local hospitals and local doctors and they kind of announced in their local circle that physicians from America are coming and you might get some help. And the next thing we knew that uh, literally if not thousands, hundreds of people showed up with their children which had significant disabilities to seek help, some type of help. I saw people walking from far away villages carrying their uh, children on their uh, shoulders because they didn't have any proper equipments to bring these kids into the hospital or the clinic. There are many stories uh, which I can share but I just want to say one more thing that in addition to the patients and their family, the physicians who were treating these patients, they were very frustrated and when we went there and I start showing them the techniques and the and the treatment options, they were very thrilled. So every year when we go uh, we see more and more doctors and therapists coming to learn these techniques. 
there is still a long way to go, but there's a lot of changes are going on. And uh, the recent, recent uh, development which happened in the, uh, as a result of my visiting for years and doing this work, that the Ministry of Health realized these, that there's a great need for uh, this field, which is called the Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation. And they decided to open a new program uh, in Iraq to train their own physician and therapist, so, which is a big achievement that we introduced uh, a new field into the land which wasn't existing there. We are very fortunate that we live in a world where so many facilities and so many opportunities are available. But if you see the part of the world where people don't have basic needs, and when you provide them even a small thing, a child who cannot walk, if you can provide them a, a wheelchair or a child who cannot swallow, you can provide them a suction tube or a child who cannot talk, you can provide them a communication board and, and uh, improve the quality of life of the, of the child and the family. And this is a great satisfaction and gratitude.